Joseph Manchin III born August 24, 1947, is an American politician serving as the senior United States Senator from West Virginia, a seat he has held since 2010. A member of the Democratic Party, he previously served as the 34th Governor of West Virginia from 2005 to 2010 and the 27th Secretary of State of West Virginia from 2001 to 2005. Manchin has been known throughout his career to be a moderate—or even conservative— Democrat, a fact which has allowed him to win elections in West Virginia even as the state shifted from one of the most heavily Democratic in the country to one of the most heavily Republican. He won the 2004 West Virginia gubernatorial election by a large margin and was re elected with an even larger margin in 2008. In both years, Republican presidential candidates captured the majority of West Virginia's votes. Manchin won the special election in 2010 to fill the seat vacated by Senator Robert Byrd when he died in office. Manchin was elected to a full term in 2012 with 60% of the vote, and was later re elected in 2018 by a much narrower margin. Manchin became the state's senior U.S. Senator when Jay Rockefeller retired in 2015. As a member of Congress, Manchin is known for his bipartisanship, voting or working with Republicans on issues such as abortion and gun ownership. He opposed the energy policies of President Barack Obama, voted against the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal Act of 2010, voted for removing federal funding from Planned Parenthood in 2015, and voted to confirm most of Republican President Donald Trump's cabinet and judicial appointees. He remains the only Democrat in the Senate to oppose same-sex marriage. However, Manchin has repeatedly voted against attempts to repeal the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act also known as Obamacare, voted to preserve funding for Planned Parenthood in 2017, and voted against the 2017 Republican tax plan. Manchin has complained about the toxic Lack of bipartisanship in Congress on almost every issue, liberal activists argue he is too conservative for the Democratic Party, while Republicans argue he is too liberal for West Virginia. <laughs> Early life and education Manchin was born in 1947 in Farmington, West Virginia, a small coal mining town, the second of five children of Mary O. and John Manchin. Manchin was derived from Mancini. His father was of Italian descent and his maternal grandparents were Czechoslovak immigrants, his father owned a carpet and furniture store, and his grandfather, Joseph Manchin, owned a grocery store. His father and his grandfather both served as mayor of Farmington, West Virginia. His uncle, A.J. Manchin, was a member of the West Virginia House of Delegates and was elected as the state's Secretary of State and Treasurer. Manchin graduated from Farmington High School in 1965. He entered West Virginia University on a football scholarship in 1965, however, an injury during practice ended his football career. Manchin graduated in 1970 with a degree in business administration and went to work for his family's business, where he ran a carpet store. Manchin was a childhood friend of Alabama Crimson Tide football coach Nick Saban, and they are still close friends to this day. Topic: <laughs> Early political career. Manchin was elected to the West Virginia House of Delegates in 1982 at the age of 35 and was elected to the West Virginia Senate in 1986, where he served until 1996. He ran for governor in 1996, finishing second to Charlotte Pritt among a large group of candidates in the Democratic primary election. He later ran and was elected as Secretary of State of West Virginia in 2000. Governor of West Virginia Manchin announced his intention to challenge incumbent Democratic Governor, Bob Wise, in the 2004 Democratic primary election in May 2003. Wise decided not to seek re-election after a scandal, and Manchin won the Democratic primary and general election by large margins. His election marked the first time that two people of the same political party had followed one another in the West Virginia governor's office since 1964. Manchin was a member of the National Governors Association, the Southern Governors Association, and the Democratic Governors Association. He was also chairman of the Southern States Energy Board, state's chair of the Appalachian Regional Commission and chairman of the Interstate Mining Compact Commission. 
In July 2005, Massey Energy CEO Don Blankenship sued Manchin, alleging that Manchin had violated Blankenship's First Amendment rights by threatening increased government scrutiny of his coal operations in retaliation for Blankenship's political activities. Blankenship had donated substantial funds into campaigns to defeat a proposed pension bond amendment and oppose the re-election of state Supreme Court Justice Warren McGraw, and he fought against a proposed increase in the severance tax on extraction of mineral resources. Soon after defeat of the pension bond amendment, the State Division of Environmental Protection DEP revoked a permit approval for controversial new silos near Marsh Fork Elementary School in Raleigh County. While area residents had complained for some time that the coal operation there endangered their children, Blankenship claimed that the DEP acted in response to his opposition to the bond amendment. During the 2006 Sago Mine disaster in early January 2006 in Upshur County, West Virginia, Manchin appeared to confirm incorrect reports that 12 miners had survived, in actuality, only one survived. Manchin later acknowledged that an unintentional miscommunication had occurred with rescue teams in the mine. On February 1, 2006, he ordered a stop to all coal production in West Virginia, pending safety checks, after two more miners were killed in separate accidents. Sixteen West Virginia coal miners died from mining accidents in early 2006. In November 2006, Surveyusa ranked him as one of the most popular governors in the country with a 74% approval rating. Manchin easily won re election to a second term as governor in 2008 against Republican Russ Weeks, capturing 69.77% of the vote and winning every county. <laughs> U.S. Senate <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Elections Topic 2010. Due to the declining health of Senator Robert Byrd, speculation focused on what Manchin's response would be if Byrd died. The governor consistently refused to comment on the subject prior to Byrd's death, except for stating that he would not appoint himself to the position. Byrd died on June 28, 2010, and Manchin appointed Cart Goodwin, his 36-year-old legal advisor, on July 16. On July 20, 2010, Manchin announced he would seek the Senate seat. In the Democratic primary on August 28, he defeated former Democratic congressman and former West Virginia Secretary of State Ken Heckler. In the general election, he then defeated Republican John Race. Topic. 2012 Manchin chose to stand for re-election to a full term in 2012. According to the Democratic firm Public Policy Polling, early polling found Manchin heavily favored, leading Congresswoman Shelley Moore Capito 50 to 39, 2010 opponent John Race 60 to 31, and Congressman David McKinley 57 to 28. Manchin had not endorsed his party's candidate, President Barack Obama, for the 2012 presidential election, saying that he had some real differences with the presumptive nominees of both major parties, finding fault with Obama's economic and energy policies, and questioning Romney's understanding of the challenges facing ordinary people. Manchin defeated Republican John Race and Mountain Party candidate Bob Henry Baber with 60.49% of the total vote and won a full term in the U.S. Senate. 2018 In 2018, Manchin ran for re-election. He was challenged in the Democratic primary by Paula Jean Swearingen. Swearingen is an activist and coal miner's daughter who is supported by former members of the Bernie Sanders campaign. Swearingen criticized Manchin for voting with the Republicans and supporting the policies of Donald Trump. On the Republican side, Manchin was challenged by West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. In August 2017, Morrissey publicly asked Manchin to resign from the Senate Democratic leadership team. Manchin responded, I don't give a shit, you understand to a Charleston Gazette Mail reporter when asked about Morrissey's call. I just don't give a shit. Don't care if I get elected, don't care if I get defeated, how about that? In the November 6, 2018 general election, Manchin was re-elected to a second full term, defeating Morrissey with 49.5% of the total vote. 
Manchin was sworn in by Vice President Joe Biden on November 15, 2010, succeeding interim Senator Cart Goodwin. Manchin named Democratic strategist Chris Kofinis to be his chief of staff. In 2015, Manchin announced that he would seek re-election to the Senate in 2018. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political positions. Joe Manchin is often considered to be a moderate, or even conservative, Democrat. Manchin describes himself as fiscally responsible and socially compassionate. CBS News has called him a rifle-brandishing moderate, who is about as centrist as a senator can get. The American Conservative Union gave him a 25% lifetime conservative rating and Americans for Democratic Action, a progressive PAC, gave him a 35% liberal quotient in 2016. In February 2018, Congressional Quarterly published a study finding that Manchin had voted with President Trump's position 71% of the time. As of June 2018, 538, which tracks congressional votes, found that Manchin had voted with President Trump's position nearly 61% of the time. In 2013, the National Journal gave Manchin an overall score of 55% conservative and 46% liberal. <laughs> Abortion Manchin identifies as pro-life. He has mixed ratings from both pro-choice and pro-life political action groups. In 2018, Planned Parenthood, which supports legal abortion, gave Manchin a lifetime grade of 57% while National Right to Life NRLC, which opposes abortion, gave Manchin a 40% score. In 2016, the NRLC scored Manchin at 75% and NARAL Pro-Choice America gave him a 100% in the same year. On August 3, 2015, he broke with Democratic leadership by voting in favor of a Republican-sponsored bill to terminate federal funding for Planned Parenthood, a nonprofit organization that provides reproductive health services, including abortions, both in the United States and globally. He has the endorsement of Democrats for Life of America, a pro-life Democratic PAC. On March 30, 2017, however, Manchin expressed support for abortion rights providers by voting against H.J. Res. 43. A pending federal regulation would have prevented states from withholding money from abortion providers. H.J. Res. 43, which was signed by President Trump, would have nullified that regulation. In April 2017, Manchin endorsed the continued funding of Planned Parenthood. Also in 2017, Planned Parenthood gave Manchin a rating of 44%. In January 2018, Manchin joined two other Democrats and the majority of Republicans by voting in favor of a bill to ban abortion after 20 weeks. In June 2018, following the retirement of Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy, Manchin urged Trump not to appoint a judge who would seek to overturn Roe v. Wade and to instead choose a centrist. Afghanistan. <inaudible> 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 On June 21, 2011, Manchin delivered a speech on the Senate floor calling for a "...substantial and responsible reduction in the United States military presence in Afghanistan." He said, "...we can no longer afford to rebuild Afghanistan and America. We must choose. And I choose America." Manchin introduced legislation to reduce the use of overseas service and security contractors. He successfully amended the 2013 National Defense Authorization Act to cap contractors' taxpayer-funded salaries at $230,000. <inaudible> Bipartisanship In his first year in office, Manchin met one on one with all of his 99 Senate colleagues in an effort to get to know them better. On December 13, 2010, Manchin participated in the launch of No Labels, a new, nonpartisan organization that is committed to bringing all sides together to move the nation forward. Manchin is a co chair of No Labels. Manchin worked with Senator Pat Toomey RPA to introduce legislation that would require a background check for most gun sales. Manchin opposed the January 2018 government shutdown. The New York Times suggested that Manchin helped bring an end to the shutdown by threatening not to run for re election unless his fellow Democrats put an end to it. Before his Senate swearing in, rumors suggested that the Republican Party was courting Manchin to change parties. 
Although the Republicans later suggested that Manchin was the source of the rumors, they attempted to convince him again in 2014 after retaking control of the Senate. He again rejected their overtures. As the 2016 elections approached, reports speculated that Manchin would switch to the Republican Party if the Senate were in a 50-50 tie. However, he later stated that he would stay with the Democratic Party for at least as long as he remained in the Senate. China In July 2017, he urged Trump to block the sale of the Chicago Stock Exchange to Chinese investors, arguing that China's "...rejection of fundamental free market norms and property rights of private citizens makes me strongly doubt whether an exchange operating under the direct control of a Chinese entity can be trusted to self-regulate, now and in the future." He also expressed concern that the challenges plaguing the Chinese market, lack of transparency, currency manipulation, etc. will bleed into the Chicago Stock Exchange and adversely impact financial markets across the country. <laughs> <laughs> Dodd-Frank in 2018, Manchin was one of 17 Democrats to break with their party and vote with Republicans to ease the Dodd-Frank banking rules. Topic. Donald Trump Manchin welcomed Donald Trump's presidency, saying, "...he'll correct the trading policies, the imbalance in our trade policies, which are horrible." He supported the idea of Trump, "...calling companies to keep them from moving factories overseas." Manchin voted for most of the Trump nominees. He was the only Democrat to vote in confirmation of Trump cabinet appointees Jeff Sessions and Steven Mnuchin, one of two Democrats who voted to confirm Scott Pruitt as EPA administrator, and one of three who voted to confirm Rex Tillerson. In June 2017, Manchin voted to support President Trump's $350 billion arms deal with Saudi Arabia. In his 2018 campaign for Senate, Manchin announced that he supports Trump's proposal to construct a border wall along the southern border of the continental United States. He also said that he regrets voting for Hillary Clinton and would be open to supporting Donald Trump for president in 2020. Topic: <inaudible> Drugs. <inaudible> in June 2011, Manchin joined Senator Chuck Schumer (DNY) in seeking a crackdown on Bitcoin currency transactions, saying that they facilitated illegal drug trade transactions. The transactions leave no traditional bank transfer money trail for investigators to follow, and leave it hard to prove a package recipient knew in advance what was in a shipment. Using an anonymizing network known as Tor. One opinion website said the senators wanted to disrupt the Silk Road drug website. In May 2012, in an effort to reduce prescription drug abuse, Manchin successfully proposed an amendment to the Food and Drug Administration Reauthorization Bill to reclassify hydrocodone as a Schedule II controlled substance. <laughs> <laughs> Energy and environment Manchin sits on the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee and supports a comprehensive, all of the above energy approach that uses coal. Manchin's first bill in the Senate dealt with what he calls the EPA's overreach. After the EPA vetoed a previously approved permit for the spruce mine in Logan County, West Virginia, Senator Manchin offered the EPA Fair Play Act. The bill would clarify and confirm the authority of the Environment Protection Agency to deny or restrict the use of defined areas as disposal sites for the discharge of dredged or filled material." Manchin said the bill would prevent the agency from "...changing its rules on businesses after permits have already been granted." On October 6, 2010, Manchin directed a lawsuit aimed at overturning new federal rules concerning mountaintop removal mining. Filed by the State Department of Environmental Protection, the lawsuit "...accuses U.S. EPA of overstepping its authority and asks the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of West Virginia to throw out the federal agency's new guidelines for issuing Clean Water Act permits for coal mines." In order to qualify for the permits, mining companies need to prove their projects would not cause the concentration of pollutants in the local water to rise five times past the normal level. 
The New York Times reported that EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson said the new legislation would protect 95% of aquatic life by banning operators from dumping mine waste into streams. Manchin has received criticism from environmentalists due to his close family ties to the coal industry. He served as president of Energy Systems in the late 1990s before becoming active in politics. On his financial disclosures in 2009 and 2010, his reported earnings from the company were $1,363,916 and $417,255 respectively. Critics have stated his opposition to health regulations that would raise expenses for the industry are due to his stake in the industry. Jim Sconiers, chairman of West Virginia's Sierra Club chapter stated that He's been nothing but a mouthpiece for the coal industry his whole public life. However, opinions on the subject are mixed, the Charleston Gazette noted. The prospect that Manchin's $1.70 million plus in recent Enersystems earnings might tilt him even more strongly pro-coal might seem remote, given the deep economic and cultural connections that the industry maintains in West Virginia. On November 14, 2011, Manchin chaired his first field hearing of that committee in Charleston, West Virginia, to focus on Marcellus Shale natural gas development and production. Manchin said, We are literally sitting on top of tremendous potential with the Marcellus Shale. We need to work together to chart a path forward in a safe and responsible way that lets us produce energy right here in America. Manchin supports building the Keystone XL pipeline from Canada. Manchin has said, "...it makes so much common sense that you want to buy oil off your friends and not your enemies." The pipeline would span over 2,000 miles across the United States. On November 9, 2011, Manchin introduced the Fair Compliance Act with Senator Dan Coats R. In. Their bill would "...lengthen timelines and establish benchmarks for utilities to comply with two major Environmental Protection Agency air pollution rules." The legislation would extend the compliance deadline for the Cross-State Air Pollution Rule, or CSAPR, by three years and the deadline for the Utility MACT Rule by two years—setting both to January 1, 2017." Manchin introduced the "...American Alternative Fuels Act," on May 10, 2011, with Senator John Barrasso R. Way. The bill would remove restrictions on the development of alternative fuels, repeal part of the 2007 energy bill restricting the federal government from buying alternative fuels and encourage the development of algae-based fuels and synthetic natural gas. Regarding the bill, Manchin said, "...our unacceptably high gas prices are hurting not only West Virginians, but all Americans, and they underscore a critical need. The federal government needs to be a partner, not an obstacle." for businesses that can transform our domestic energy resources into gas." In 2011, Manchin was the only Democratic senator to support the proposed Energy Tax Prevention Act, which sought to prohibit the United States Environmental Protection Agency from regulating greenhouse gas. He was also one of four Democratic senators to vote against the Stream Protection Rule. In 2012 Manchin supported a GOP effort to scuttle environmental protection agency regulations that mandate cuts in mercury pollution and other toxic emissions from coal-fired power plants." While West Virginia's other senator, Jay Rockefeller, did not, Manchin criticized Obama's environmental regulations as a "...war on coal," and demanded what he described as a proper balance between the needs of the environment and the coal business. The Los Angeles Times has noted that while professing environmental concerns, he has consistently stood up for coal, saying, "...no one is going to stop using fossil fuels for a long time." He "...does not deny the existence of man-made climate change," wrote the Los Angeles Times, but "...is reluctant to curtail it." In February 2017, he was one of only two Democratic senators to vote to confirm Scott Pruitt as administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency. In June 2017, Manchin supported President Trump's withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accord, saying he supported a cleaner energy future, but that the Paris deal failed to strike a balance between our environment and the economy. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Federal budget. Manchin has co-sponsored balanced budget amendments put forth by Senators Mike Lee Richard Shelby and Mark Udall 
He has also voted against raising the federal debt ceiling. Manchin has expressed strong opposition to entitlement reform, describing Mitch McConnell's comments in October 2018 on the need to reform entitlement programs such as Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare as absolutely ridiculous. Topic: <laughs> Guns. In 2012 Manchin's candidacy was endorsed by the National Rifle Association NRA, which gave him an A rating. Following the Sandy Hook shooting, Manchin partnered with Republican Senator Pat Toomey to introduce a bill that would have strengthened background checks on gun sales. The Manchin-Toomey bill was defeated on April 17, 2013, by a vote of 54 to 46, 60 votes would have been required to pass it. Despite the fact that the bill did not pass, the NRA targeted Manchin in an attack ad. Manchin was criticized in 2013 for agreeing to an interview with the journal in Martinsburg, West Virginia, but demanding that he not be asked any questions about gun control or the Second Amendment. In 2016, referring to the difficulty of keeping guns out of the hands of potential terrorists, Manchin said, Due process is what's killing us right now. This comment drew the criticism of both the NRA and the Cato Institute, which accused Manchin of attacking a fundamental constitutional principle. With all respect, commented Ilya Shapiro of Cato, due process is the essential basis of America. <laughs> <laughs> Health care In 2010, Manchin called for repairs of the Affordable Care Act and repeal of the bad parts of Obamacare." On January 14, 2017, Manchin expressed concern at the strict party-line vote on repealing Obamacare and said he could not, in good conscience, vote to repeal without a new plan in place. He added, however, that he was willing to work with Trump and the GOP to formulate a replacement. In June 2017, Manchin and Bob Casey Jr. of Pennsylvania warned that repealing Obamacare would worsen the opioid crisis. In July 2017, he said that he was one of about 10 senators from both parties who had been working together behind the scenes to formulate a new health care program, but that there was otherwise insufficient bipartisanship on the issue. During 2016 17, Manchin read to the Senate several letters from constituents about loved ones' deaths from opioids and urged his colleagues to act to prevent more deaths. Manchin took an unusual proposal to President Trump to address the crisis and called for a war on drugs that involves not punishment but treatment. He proposed the Lifeboat Act, which would fund treatment. He also opposes marijuana legalization. In January 2018, Manchin was one of six Democrats who broke with their party to vote to confirm Trump's nominee for health secretary, Alex Azar. In his 2018 re-election campaign, Manchin emphasized his support for Obamacare, running an ad where he shot holes in a lawsuit that sought to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Topic. Immigration Manchin is opposed to the DREAM Act, and was absent from a 2010 vote on the bill. Manchin supports the construction of a wall along the southern border of the United States. Manchin voted against the McCain-Coons proposal to create a pathway to citizenship for some undocumented immigrants without funding for a border wall and he voted against a comprehensive immigration bill proposed by Susan Collins which gave a pathway to citizenship for Dreamers as well as funding for border security. He voted yes to withholding funding for sanctuary cities and he voted in support of President Trump's proposal to give a pathway to citizenship for Dreamers, build a border wall, and reduce legal immigration. Manchin has mixed ratings from political Political action committees opposed to illegal immigration. Numberusa, which seeks to reduce illegal and legal immigration, gave Manchin a 55% rating, and the Federation for American Immigration Reform, which also seeks to reduce legal immigration, gave him a 25% rating. Topic: <laughs> LGBT rights. On December 9, 2010, Manchin was the sole Democrat to vote against cloture for the 2011 National Defense Authorization Act, which contained a provision to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. In an interview with the Associated Press, Manchin cited the advice of retired military chaplains as a basis for his decision to vote against repeal. He also indicated he wanted more time to hear the full range of viewpoints from the citizens of West Virginia. 
A day later, he was publicly criticized at a gay rights rally for his position on the bill. As of 2013, he was one of three Democratic senators who still opposed same sex marriage, and as of 2015, he was the only Democratic senator who opposed gay marriage. The Guardian attributed his opposition to ideology, rather than electoral concerns, noting his votes against the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and for the Defense of Marriage Act. The Human Rights Campaign, a PAC which supports same-sex marriage and other LGBT rights, gave Manchin an 85% scoring in line with their positions in 2016, a 0% in 2014, and a 65% in 2012. Topic. Senior citizens To help locate missing senior citizens, Manchin introduced the Silver Alert Act in July 2011 to create a nationwide network for locating missing adults and senior citizens modeled after the Amber Alert. Manchin also sponsored the National Yellow Dot Act to create a voluntary program that would alert emergency services personnel responding to car accidents of the availability of personal and medical information on the car's owner. Manchin said in 2014 that he would change Social Security completely. I would do it on an inflationary basis, as far as paying into payroll taxes, and change that, to keep us stabilized as far as cash flow. I'd do colas. I'd talk about COLA for 250% of poverty guidelines." Asked whether this meant he would "...cut benefits to old people." Manchin said that "...a rich old person won't get the COLAs." He asked, do you want chain CPI? I can live with either one. <laughs> Supreme Court nominations Manchin was the first Democrat to say he would vote for Trump's first nominee for the Supreme Court, Neil Gorsuch. Manchin said, During his time on the bench, Judge Gorsuch has received praise from his colleagues who have been appointed by both Democrats and Republicans. He has been consistently rated as a well-qualified jurist, the highest rating a jurist can receive, and I have found him to be an honest and thoughtful man. He was the first Democrat to announce that he would meet with Trump's second Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. Manchin was the only Democrat to vote yes on the cloture of Kavanaugh's nomination, advancing the motion to a final vote. On October 5, 2018, he announced he would vote to confirm Kavanaugh. On October 6, Manchin was the only Democrat to vote to confirm Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court in a 50-48 count. Topic. Taxes According to Politico, Manchin sees Trump's Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 as a closed process that makes little impact in the paychecks of the people in his state. At the same time, he posited the bill contains some good things. Initially people will benefit, although ultimately voting against it. In turn, NRSC spokesman Bob Solera stated that he had turned his back and voted with Washington Democrats. Topic: <inaudible> Terrorism. <inaudible> In June 2017, he was one of five Democrats who, by voting against a Senate resolution disapproving of arms sales to Saudi Arabia, ensured its failure. Potential primary opponent Paula Jean Swearingen charged that because of Manchin's vote, weapons sold to the Saudis could possibly end up in the hands of terrorists. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Committee assignments. Committee on Appropriations. Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agencies. Subcommittee on Financial Services and General Government. Subcommittee on Homeland Security Subcommittee on Labor, Health and Human Services, Education, and Related Agencies Subcommittee on Transportation, Housing and Urban Development, and Related Agencies Committee on Energy and Natural Resources Subcommittee on Energy Subcommittee on Public Lands, Forests, and Mining Subcommittee on Water and Power Senate Select Committee on Intelligence Senate Veterans Affairs Committee Topic Personal life Manchin is a member of the National Rifle Association and a licensed pilot. 
In 1967, he married Gail Connolly. Together they have three children, Heather, Joseph IV, and Brooke. In 2006 and 2010 Manchin delivered commencement addresses at Wheeling Jesuit University and at Davis and Elkins College, receiving honorary degrees from both institutions. In December 2012, Manchin voiced his displeasure with MTV's new reality show Buck Wild, set in his home state's capital Charleston, and asked the network's president to cancel the show, which, he argued, depicted West Virginia in a negative, unrealistic fashion. The show ended after its first season. Topic: Controversies. Topic: Heather Bresh. West Virginia University WVU awarded Manchin's daughter, Heather Bresch, an MBA in 2007, the year she became COO at Mylan Inc., the third largest generic pharmaceutical manufacturer in the U.S. with headquarters in Morgantown, adjacent to the WVU campus. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reported that in order to justify this degree, university officials had added courses to her transcript that she had never taken and altered grades she had received. The ensuing controversy resulted in the rescinding of her MBA and the resignation of the university president, Mike Garrison, a Manchin family friend, and Garrison's legal counsel and the dean of the business school. A panel was convened to fully investigate the measure. When the MBA controversy erupted, according to the Huntington News, Manchin, act ed as though he and his wife, Gail, were somehow the victims of this hoax that almost cost WVU its academic credibility. According to the Huntington News, the Mansions were seen as people willing to destroy the university's reputation rather than admit a mistake. Noting in a December 2011 editorial that the magazine Esquire had promoted Heather Bresch as an American hero, owing to her support for a pharma safety law, the Huntington News pointed out that the law also protected U.S. pharma firms like Mylan and suggested that the article was a public makeover engineered by the Manchin Public Relations Machine. It also said that Milan must have the only corporate board of directors in the country that doesn't care about one of their top execs being proven to have a phony MBA degree. Despite Manchin's call for a war on drugs, particularly opioids, and his charge that Big Pharma had targeted his state, Manchin's daughter, as noted, is the CEO of Mylan, a pharmaceutical firm that produces opioids, and Manchin himself accepted nearly $180,000 in donations from pharmaceutical companies between 2011 and 2016. In August 2016, Fortune magazine and The Washington Post ran a total of three articles about the fact that the CEO of the company at the center of the EpiPen controversy was Manchin's daughter. The articles noted that skyrocketing EpiPen costs were the next big flash point in the national debate over skyrocketing prescription drug prices, that Bresch had originally gotten her Milan job through her father, and that her career had risen along with her father's, a fact that has not gone unnoticed by her critics. A particular point of controversy was the fact that Bresch had transferred Milan's official headquarters to the Netherlands, a tax dodge maneuver known as tax inversion. Topic. Family lawsuit In a lawsuit filed in July 2014, Dr. John Manchin II, one of Joe Manchin's brothers, sued Joe Manchin and his other brother, Rock Manchin, over a $1.7 million loan. The lawsuit alleged that Joe and Rock Manchin borrowed the money to keep the doors open at the family-owned carpet business run by Rock, that no part of the loan had yet been repaid, and that the defendants had taken other measures to evade compensating John Manchin II for non-payment. Dr. Manchin withdrew the suit on June 30, 2015. Topic. Manchin's coal interests In July 2011, the New York Times ran a long article headlined, Sen. Manchin maintains lucrative ties to family-owned coal company. Manchin's 2009 and 2010 financial disclosures included major earnings from Enersystems Inc., a coal brokerage that he helped run before his political star rose. 
Many senators earn business income, but Manchin is rare in that he derives income from an industry while acting as one of its biggest boosters. <laughs> Skipping votes and convention On December 18, 2010, Manchin skipped the vote to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell and the vote on the DREAM Act, regarding immigration. The National Republican Senatorial Committee criticized Manchin for attending a family Christmas gathering instead of voting on these important issues. For a senator who has only been on the job a few weeks, commented the NRSC. Manchin's absence today, and the apparent lack of seriousness with which he takes the job he was elected to do, speaks volumes. The Washington Post reported that he was the only Senate Democrat to miss these votes on two of his party's signature pieces of legislation. Later, in 2012, Manchin also skipped the Democratic National Convention, saying he planned to spend this fall focused on the people of West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Electoral history <laughs>